Hey, you, rise and shine. Wake up, niggas, it's about that time. Coffee's brewing and all we're doing is working, screwing, and getting high. This is Going Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. <laughs> what was that from? You never heard this song? <laughs> no, the hell was that? <laughs> it's by the Coffee Brothers. Let's see, it's got the, uh, oh. it's spelled like cough. Oh, so it's like the drink, but not spelt the same, like Green Mile. Cause, cause they're, cause they're smoking on that good. Mmm, mmm. I see. What you reminded me of was a local radio station we have around here. It's like the only hip hop and R and B station, and uh, and they always start their show where, where they say, uh, "Hit them boys in the head. It's the morning madhouse." Bing. <laughs> What? <laughs> Is that the sound of the bat hitting them over the head? Yeah. <laughs> they should have been sampling that that Brother Dean video. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say. Bing. I was like, I, I guess they'll wake up, but probably not for long. <laughs> <laughs> you wake them up to knock them back out. <laughs> Wait, it, did you see the video I sent you? Oh, shit, I didn't even realize you sent it. Yeah, hold on. What, what I love about this album cover, for one, it looks really cheap. <laughs> yeah like Devin the dude presents coffee brothers and then there's a there's a little coffee cup which is cute and it's got the little it's got the little pot leaf waiting our turn and he's it's, it's got the one guy and he's taking a toke and he's just got the other guys like come on man <laughs> what I love is the guy to the right is Devin the dude at least I think oh, so oh yeah okay and it's the other two guys that are the coffee brothers one of them's not even like fully in frame <laughs> It's not even their turn, and it's their album. <laughs> like, Keep no, on no. waiting, brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Devin ain't done. But uh, I don't think they have uh, Scarface's verse anywhere on the internet. But uh, of particular note is his verse. Go to uh, go to one fifty five. <laughs> what the fuck, <laughs> dude? I'm going to say that that was technically a very good verse. Yeah, right? Delivery was great. But what the... Okay, so... <laughs> he's, he, he, he's fucking a woman, yeah. as one would expect. And uh, he says, she smells like weed and looks like Whitney. So I'm going to be Bobby. And immediately I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Th- this can't this can't end up well with that fucking with that analogy put into place but then he kind of he kind of goes off to the side and almost loses you for a second until he says and then she bit me so i fucking beat her up pretty much yeah, it was like wait whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so she bites him he doesn't take it well but they still have sex anyway yeah like okay he says it says, then this bitch bit me, then this shit hit me, beat the fuck out the hoe, played it off like, oh, then I doubled my stroke. Like, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what came over me. I'm terribly sorry, madam. <laughs> let, me, let me double up on my efforts so that I get back in your good graces. But Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> In case you forget about the assault that just went down. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't forget about the dick, though. Yeah, yeah, that, was, that was pretty good what we were doing before, eh? She's fucking just weighing her options like, man, I mean, the dick is good, but I, I don't know if he's just gonna start beating me up again. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, I did bite him, but really, does that fucking constitute me getting my ass beat? <laughs> Fuck, man. Gonna say no. Yeah, no. And it's just like, it's said so quickly... Uh, beat the fuck out of the hoe. Play it off like, oh, like, no, you can't just play that off. <laughs> like, ah, uh, gotcha. That ah, was a prank. It's just a prank, bro. Social <laughs> experiment. Prank, bro. <laughs> Fucking dude falls out of the closet with the camcorder. <laughs> oh, it's just a prank. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to talk about sex noises in, in songs, right? Oh, okay. Because, like, you hear it sort of in this song, you know, you hear the, uh, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, like, I'm cool with it when it's like that, when it's, like, slightly in the background, it kind of helps you, you know, visualize what's happening, you know what I mean? Mm. What I don't like 
And so then, like, it's up front and center, and it's not just, like, a girl moaning. Like, no, it, like, sounds like people having sex. Like, you hear the bed moving and everything like that, you know? And, like, it can be taken in one aspect where it's, like, if you hear just a girl moaning, it just sounds like, oh, she's, you know, getting her rocks off, whatever. But when it just sounds like people having sex, I don't know. For me, that's just my limit. Like, it's just, like, all right, I can't, I can't listen to this. This is too, it's slightly too awkward, you know? Yeah, because and- what I thought you were going to say was... Like you're picturing the recording, yeah. Like, <laughs> like what what goes down there? Like someone <laughs> for someone to act like they're enjoying sex or orgasming or whatever. That's one thing because I imagine someone could imitate that relatively easily. Yeah. But now you're adding in like it's a fucking radio play <laughs> where you got fucking foley artists. Working with sw- working with uh, springs, trying to replicate a bed squeak, and then you got like a pounding, and then you got someone slapping like like a steak <laughs> to to imitate the skin slapping. Like, all right, <laughs> I didn't realize this was such a fucking production, Devin the dude. <laughs> no, but, uh, I noticed I noticed huh? sex sounds, and they sounded really lazy and lame. Like it was just like. Like, that could be anything. <laughs> it's like they're not even putting their all into it. What I was going to point your attention to is, last week I was talking about a uh, The Genius's first album, right? Yeah, yeah. Go to the last song called Super Freak. Just start listening to the first ten seconds, and you'll get what I'm talking about. No, I don't need that. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to be. That sounds awful. (laughs) 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 Like, what What, the hell is that supposed to be? What gets me is the bubble popping sound. Oh, is that what that was? What the fuck is that supposed to to be? I heard (laughs) something. Yeah, I couldn't tell what that was. It's like, (laughs) is is it like going in and out? Like, he's like, man, I can't keep this damn thing in. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he's doing that thing where, like, you put your thumb in your mouth and so like, you're, just, <laughs> you're just doing that over and over again. Like, what the fuck is this? Why, why would that be the sound of sex to them? Why is that what sex sounds like for them? I'm also looking at the album cover. Where is he supposed to be? I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's like just... in, he's like in an air vent. <laughs> With volumes of his work. Yeah. This is only volume one. Oh, shit. But he has up to volume seven, but I assume they're blank. (laughs) He's got it ready. (laughs) He just knows, because once the genius gets started, there's no stopping him. So, uh, I want to also point your attention to um, the song Stay Out of Bars. Track 13, and I want you to just listen to this. Oh, um, I read your fucking <laughs> tweets about this one. <laughs> oh, god damn it, genius. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I think we talked about this before, too, with, uh, Tone Loke, where it was Tone vaguely Loke, transphobic. West. Yeah. There's just this thing in the 90s where they, like, rappers must have just confronted dudes who dress like chicks a lot. <laughs> I mean, in in the case with Tone Loke, the uh, the person in question uh, went up to him for sex. But it sounds like in these other ones, they're just like looking for these people to assault and harass. <laughs> yeah, it's like no. we don't want you here. We're gonna make it known by assaulting you. And I I don't know what they're expecting at that point, but I can't like them after that. Yeah, and, and it really sucks. Is like you know the genius. This is fucking one of the best rappers of all time. Mm. Love his work. But it's just like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and, and I understand. I think just the early 90s is just, it is really hated men who dress like women. And what's funny is that it's just like, like, it's not like you ran across that shit every day. You know? I was just going to say, how prevalent was that? <laughs> yeah. Especially what? in a climate where people were getting beat up for no good reason. I imagine there weren't too many people brave enough to be like, oh, no, this is fine. People will totally accept me for who I am. The first verse is like, oh, man, I ran into... Basically, okay, the song is saying, like, stay out of bars because bars are, like, fucking horrible, right? 
Okay. And, and to get uh, as an example of why you should stay out, let me tell you these stories. You know, mm. and he's like he he goes through one and he's uh, he goes through one scenario where he's at a bar and he gets a he gets a beep because <laughs> that's how old this fucking song is. He gets he, hit on the hip and horn. Yeah, so he's trying to find a phone. So he starts stumbling to the phone booth, revealing all symptoms of drinking ninety proof. The phone booth door is closed. The light is on. This girlie just dialed 970 porn. She sit back with her legs cocked in the air while her fingers do the walking through her naughty pubic hair. Her eyes are shut tight. She moans and groans. I hit the glass. Get off the fucking phone. Now, who the fuck is, like, is she running a sex phone line out of a bar? No, I, I think she just called up to one. She she called a sex phone. Okay, women are not calling sex phone lines. That can't no. be true. I have literally never seen a, hey, here are guys here to talk to women. Uh, we, you know, you saw those commercials in the 90s, right? It, yeah, was, either, it was either uh, women saying, hey, call for a good time, or it was men saying, hey, men, call for a good time. Yeah, we just recently actually did a video where we watched compilations of commercials for sex lines from the early to mid 90s. And yeah, all of them are women saying, I can't wait to talk to you. Talk about all your fantasies. And the only ones with dudes, the, the, my favorite one was this, this one guy is talking about like, man, I'm tired of being turned down. So I don't know how calling a sex line is like actually getting a girlfriend or having sex, but there was that one. And then there was the other one where a guy said, man, my friend called up this this one sex line and now he's just a life of the party. The, the girls just can't what? keep their hands off him. Like, <laughs> that what? That makes no sense. That makes That's not how it works. This. <laughs> None of them were targeted towards women. I think there was one, but it was like... Yeah, it wasn't from dudes. It was basically just like you, I think you called up and you listened to stories right, that right. would then turn you on and get you off. But it wasn't like women were calling and speaking to other women. They, they, they weren't advertising to that demographic in the 90s. Yeah, and, and, uh, Especially not on TV. Here's the thing that's even more confusing. So this women went out to a bar mm. to call a sex line. Because she doesn't have a phone at home. Like, I I feel like if you're at a bar and you're hard up, and you're that hard up for sex, I'm pretty sure someone could fill your needs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come the fuck on. This story makes absolutely no fucking sense. And even then, so we get further into the song and she says, um, I said, hold up, bitch. Uh, I held up, yo, bitch, you think it's cute to be perverted, let alone a sleazy prostitute? See, this is the thing. That's the line that led me to believe, oh, she must be running a sex line from a bar. But like you said, you know, it seems like she should be calling a sex line, right? Because especially since they're saying that she's actually like, you know, getting pleasure out of this. You know what I mean? Mm. So, okay, so that must be the case, right? But she's a prostitute. So why the fuck is a prostitute paying money (laughs) to talk on a sex line? Like, you got the game backwards, honey. (laughs) I I, I don't think the genius knows all the pieces of the puzzle. I don't think he knows what's going on. He's doing a lot of assuming. But, again, is this something that would happen a lot in bars? No. (laughs) But, you know, maybe it's like, it's supposed to be like, oh, man, it's crazy. Like, you know, the the tales from the Dane side. Like, uh, these are weird things that would only happen to me. But Mm. it's not set up like that it's not like here's a weird thing that happened to me it's saying stay out of bars because this is what could happen to you it's like i don't think you're gonna run across many women playing with themselves in phone booths i mean i know it's not a common occurrence now but i don't think back then like (laughs) no one now is on their fucking cell phone playing with their playing with their fucking nana like oh yeah this is so hot this isn't awkward like in fucking public in a goddamn bar I'm wondering how many phone booths were actually in bars. Normally, it's just a phone on a wall. Because phone booths are outside. So, you know, I get this strange feeling. This whole story is bullshit. 
<laughs> this never happened at all, did it, genius? <laughs> Confess. As this red bone who thought she looked fly rolled up on me and she said hi. That one little word fucked up the whole night. Her voice was deeper than Barry White. I, I got a girl with me, but this other person's rolling up to me and sa- has said hi to me in a way that I feel is flirtatious. But her voice sounds like a dude. Now, what do you think his reaction's gonna be? Hey, you know, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm already taken for the night, you know, or, you know, I'm not into that. Uh, uh, this is what he does. Are you, are, you t- are you telling me the genius isn't a gentleman? <laughs> are you telling me he overreacted a smidge? <laughs> I jumped up, and boy did I flip, pulled out a nine, and emptied the clip. The place was flowing with crazy blood, a little Midtown Massacre-type flood. And as we stepped off from the scene, here's the message I got from Rakim. (laughs) Stay out of bars. You killed everybody in a bar, (laughs) because (laughs) one guy dressed as a chick said hi. He didn't grab your dick, you know? He didn't, he didn't just start going to town on you. You know what I mean? He didn't, he didn't rub himself up against it. He said fucking hi. And y- you had to empty the clip on the whole goddamn bar. Because he doesn't just say, you know, I left him fucking laid out. No. Right. A midtown massacre type flood of blood. He could have accidentally killed Riza and his chick. <laughs> And uh, like I said on Twitter, I, I just get the feeling, like I just get the, the 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 image of him just like pulling out his gun and just running in place in a circle, shooting everyone. Just going, like, I'm not gay, I'm not gay. He just flew on his back and did some b boy shit, <laughs> spun on his fucking head and just shot everybody with his feet. <laughs> Like, what a lunatic! And why are we supposed to be like, yeah, Jizza, that was appropriate? <laughs> like, boy, did I flip! Boy, is my face red! I sure am embarrassed. <laughs> We're not supposed to laugh along to that. And now that I'm dressed in the fucking county blues, I can never go back to a bar again. That's my story. I'm definitely staying out of bars. Now that I'm behind bars. Uh... <laughs> That actually would have been kind of clever. Yeah, see? No, Why aren't I writing anthologies of my work in a fucking gold-plated air vent? <laughs> no, I just, I just love the fact that it's like, his message to us is, oh boy, stay out of bars, because you might run into crazy assholes like him. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> It actually is a valuable lesson. <laughs> you might have absolutely nothing to do with what's going on, and you might get fucking killed by a lunatic rapper with a short fuse. Because <laughs> he didn't want anyone to possibly think that he might have been gay. No, no. Uh, you, you know, he gave, us, he gave us a message, but I don't think it translated in the way he wanted it to. <laughs> We gotta talk about the Grammys, man. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember before it started, I heard that they made it a point to be like, if you go up and you say political shit, you won't, you won't be awarded a Grammy. What? Yeah, it was like if you go up there and you say some shit, like hateful shit about Trump, you won't be presented the trophy. I since think that was the is, deal. Well, since when is that a thing? Oh, oh, wait, let me guess, let me guess. We have to wait 40 years later to when you become an icon for speaking your mind, then we'll give you an award. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, see, it, it, it came out anyway. It wasn't, uh, they didn't name Trump at all, but um, they might as fucking well have. No, dude, fucking Buster Rhymes is like... Shout out to Agent Orange, President Agent Orange, for yeah. your fucking failed Muslim ban. <laughs> yeah, that, that, it really does rely on the dudes you know who wouldn't be getting a Grammy that year anyway. Yeah, yeah. Like, Buster Rhymes isn't gonna be up for shit. He can go up there and say shit. Fucking, I don't know, I don't know who Paris Jackson was. Who was that? Paris Jackson? Um, uh, I haven't heard, oh, wait, no, it's, uh... Uh, Michael Jackson's kid. Is that who that is? I thought it was, but she looked too old or too grown up. I didn't. I didn't think the age matched. Oh, what did you assume she was gonna be like seven forever? I didn't. I didn't know how old she was at the time. Mm. Dude, no, but I see, like, uh. I, 
I know Paris Jackson wasn't going to be up for anything, so she can go up there and fucking say, we can really use this excitement at a, at a uh, pipeline demonstration. Hashtag no dapple. Like, people can get away with saying that shit, but like, I wasn't expecting Beyonce to come up there and say something explicitly, you know, a direct reference to yeah. anything, especially when she's up for like nine fucking Grammys. <laughs> But you got you got some of the lesser known folks who who have that luxury. Um, yeah, I was gonna go ahead and say that best performance of the night would probably go to um, uh, Tribe Called Quest. I think, as far as getting the crowd pop, uh, hype, the fucking pr- the stage show itself, getting the that like the brick wall kicked down. Oh br- yeah bringing all the folks on stage, um, <laughs> shouting resist at the end of it. Like, I didn't, I, I had forgot by that point that there was going to be a performance by Tribe, uh, Tribe Cold Quest and uh, uh. Anderson Pock and, um, and uh, Consequence and Busta Rhymes, but I was excited for that. Up until that point, the best performance was probably Beyonce's. Um, but I also got to give a lot of respect to, uh, to fucking Katy Perry for bringing it. Mm. Did you see hers? No. So Katy Perry goes up there performing her new song, Chained to the Rhythm, which is an otherwise pretty generic uh, pop song, but when you listen to the lyrics, it's talking about how, like, we're so focused on the music, we're chained to the rhythm, that we're stuck in our comfortable bubble, and we're not realizing, like, the horrible shit that's actually going on outside. So she goes out there uh, with a resist armband on... Uh, performs this song, and the house that they're in, this, like, stage house, is being held by, like, everyone's holding a piece of the house. And then the house, like, explodes, like, they all run in different directions, and it looks like the house blew apart. And they turn the pieces that they were holding around, and projected onto them is the fucking Constitution, just the big we the people. Oh, shit. It was so fucking cool. That was great. I wasn't expecting that from uh, from Katy Perry, although she was extremely vocal uh, in supporting uh, Hillary during the election show, so mm. I shouldn't be too surprised, but yeah, very it'd politically funny, charged. It'd be funny if she would have just said, read it, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Again, wasn't up for a Grammy that year because she didn't really do a whole lot of shit in 2016, so yeah, she might as well have just fucking did that shit. <laughs> You can't just do whatever the fuck you want. It's not King Trump, goddammit. Right? Jesus. No, but I was actually, uh, it was a, it was an overall exciting night on, uh, on two accounts, because I was watching the Grammys, and I was also watching um, the new uh, WWE pay-per-view that was that night that was also mm-hmm. very entertaining. I was kind of going back and forth between them. And yeah, it was just, both were really good shows. I thought oh, James Corden did a good job of uh, hosting. I know oh, there's going to be a lot of hate for him because people seem to think he's the fucking Antichrist or whatever because <laughs> cause he did a commercial that was yeah. unfunny once. <laughs> no, but, um, and Chance won, like, three awards. Fucking Chance cleaned house, yeah. I was like, hell yeah, dude, go you. Even Best though, new artist, uh, even, uh, though Acid rap rap album. Was, even though Acid Rap was the better album, but, you know, that's how the Grammys do. They're always, like, at one album late. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. It's like when they fucking um give best director too. It always seems like they give the best director award to really accomplished directors, but like way after they should have already got one. Like fucking um the Cohen brothers didn't get one until No Country for Old Men. Fucking uh Scorsese didn't get one until The Departed. Like what the fuck? These people have been you, making movies for decades, you and know they're just happened? now recognizing them. You know what happened? They 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 snuffed one dude one year, and every year since then they've always been one off. <laughs> yeah, like they're like, oh shit, we forgot to give it to him. Hey, let's give it to him this year. And the other guy's like, dude, I, I made a great film this year. Ah, fuck, we'll give it to you next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, Beyonce was up for the most awards, uh, nine. Um. Got the contemporary R and B album, but not the best album. Cause they are some bullshit. Uh, we about to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I seen your post. I don't know the uh, the credentials or exactly how much um, 
credence I would give uh, give that post, but I wouldn't say it's out of the realm of possibility. Well, here's the thing. That's from a New York Times article. That wasn't oh, just like that? a fan thing. Yeah, because I found it. I, I see, I, I, like, you know how you search the words on Google and put them in, um, put them in quotes so that you find the exact thing that it came from? That's from mm. a New York Times article. And they were talking about, yeah, we talked to these people and that's what they said. So I just want to point out this first fucking Todd the Shadows. He was like, uh, someone asked him, like, so what what constitutes winning a Grammy, right? Like, what what's the what's the formula? And he said, does it remind people of folk, soul, jazz, or crooner music from fifty to eighty years ago? Grammys ahoy! Is it a comeback album from a, a is it a comeback album from a music legend with lots of guest spots from hot younger artists? Grammys, baby. Yeah. And finally, is it a follow-up record to a bigger, better album that didn't win Grammys? Here's your Grammy. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That was basically Chance this year. What? When you see movies that are Oscar bait, there are definitely albums that are Grammy bait, and fucking Twenty Five was screaming Grammy bait. Like, if following up Twenty One, which was the superior album. Definitely. Had better singles. Definitely. Um, this one, I would say, out of the four singles uh, that uh, that came from it, um, Hello. Hello was um, all right. Hello was a good single, I thought. Then it kind of, uh, it, it was good, bad, good, bad. Because it went yeah. hello, then it went... Um, send my love send, to your new lover, right? Yeah, and I didn't care for that one. That one was Then it came whack. back... Th- th- then it came back, in my opinion, with that, um... When We Were Young? Uh, When We Were Young is a great song. Yeah, that that one was fucking glorious. That was the best one. And then it fucking came back again with that Water Under the Bridge song, which just sucks. Yeah, this yeah, is not, yeah. This isn't up to Adele's usual par. And, yeah, like, when, when I saw it was up for best album, I honestly, I didn't think it was even, like... For for whatever reason, I thought that Beyonce kind of had that in the bag, but I, I guess I should have thought twice. This is what the the New York Times said because it says New York Times reported this, uh, and they even have a link in the original thing. According to a senior music executive who attended the meetings and spoke on the condition of anonymity uh, because he was not authorized to discuss the internal deliberations, there was a, quote, very spirited debate that took maybe five minutes and included several voters' suspicions that by recording a rock song and a country song on her album Lemonade, Beyonce was trying to, quote, run the table on nominations in a diverse group of categories. An artist like Beyonce... I don't ex- I don't imagine that she wrote a full album and recorded it in hopes of winning a Grammy. Yeah, like <laughs> like Grammy, y'all sniffing your own asses right now. <laughs> Dude, p- p- people have been making jokes about how little the Grammys fucking mean since like the 90s. <laughs> sure, it looks good to have won one, but like there's so many fucking categories for, like, every fucking sub-niche genre that, like, yeah, after a while, it's like, dude, it's like, yeah, I, I got a Grammy. Yeah, so did Patton Oswald. Who fucking cares? <laughs> what the hell it's does that to, mean? Not to just Patton Oswald, but... No, you know? absolutely not, but I'm just saying. It's like <laughs> Adele and Patton Oswald got the exact same statue, just with a different engraving on it. But uh, now, now the thing that I kind of didn't like is that, okay, so he says, the Grammys literally punished Beyonce. That I agree with. Mm. And then he says, a black woman and the greatest entertainer of the past couple decades. Absolutely roll on that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but I will agree with this. They literally punished Beyonce for stretching the boundaries on her music. That's not fair. The other uh, topic... We gotta touch on, and, and we've we've already been running long. We gotta get to the album review. We gotta t- we we gotta talk about our boy. Who? PewDiePie. Oh yeah. As somebody who has in the past made some content that has some questionable material in it, some jokes that could be taken as offensive, I'll totally own up to that. I'm editing a video right now where, where we make jokes about SIDS. I'm in no way putting myself on some higher pedestal of, brr, 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 you know, brr. but what? <laughs> but what Felix 
Because fuck his stage name. What Felix, the man, has done? I, I, I read a tweet that put it in perfect perspective. And for those who don't know why he was dropped by YouTube, having his uh, YouTube Red show canceled, being dropped from uh, the, the Disney-owned uh, maker, uh, former over a company of uh, Blip and all that. So what happened was there's a website called Fiverr and you go on this website and you pay people uh, $5 for a specific service. So let's just say someone with a really great announcer voice can go on there and say, hey, for $5, I'll read your voiceover script for a video you're working on. Like you send me the script, I'll record it. You pay me five bucks. There it is. So, apparently there was this one uh, account that was just this, like, this remote tribe, I believe, that would just, like, hold up signs or whatever. You pay them five bucks, and that's how they made their money to support themselves was through Fiverr. So, Felix decides, hey, I'm a multi-millionaire. I'm gonna throw my weight around as a joke. Pay these people five dollars. To hold a sign that says Hitler did nothing wrong. No, 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 it was death to all Jews. Death to all Jews. Then there was the other one where it was someone dressed up like Jesus saying Hitler did nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah. Dude, they got their Fiverr accounts deleted because of that. Yeah. That's how they made their fucking money. And this guy just, as a joke, ruins their lives. Because, yeah. oh, he thought it'd be funny. I mean, it, I think they got it reinstated later. Well, good. I hope so. But see, the point is, those people's lives are ruined now. Yeah. They're always going to be tied to the guys that held up the death to all Jews sign. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just move on and get another job from that, especially in this age where people are always fucking looking through. Uh, bosses are always looking through your shit to find, you know, if you've done something fucked up. Oh, oh that's mm-hmm. the guy from the death to all Jews video. Yeah, no. He's so tone deaf. I'd watched... An interview he did with um with uh, H3H3 s- 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 some time ago, and uh, he was talking about Trump in a way that you can tell he just had no idea about the gravity of the situation, and like he didn't understand why people were afraid, why people were so distraught about him being president. You could tell he had no idea what was going on, but. Yeah, it comes down to, like, then don't fucking say anything about it. Like, if you don't know the situation, don't fucking open your mouth, because you just sound stupid. And in a case like this, you have to be some privileged as fuck, out of the goddamn loop, asshole, to think, no, 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 this this is great. I'm just going to pay $5, you know, like, I'm just going to throw some chump change, because I'm so fucking loaded, to these underprivileged people, to do this horribly offensive thing because it makes me laugh. This is like when a fucking king or like a like a like a fucking tyrant or a dictator would pay people five dollars to like eat their shit as like a court gesture to make him, to make him laugh. This is on the exact same level. You know, when I had heard about it, I was like, okay, okay, okay. People like to sensationalize shit, right? I want to watch the original video myself. And apparently there's eight other videos, three of which have been taken down. But this is the main one that people went to. So I was like, well, let me watch this one, right? And the problem with the video is the presentation. Because when you watch the video, it's him going, oh, well, somebody sent me this is going to laugh. Uh, sent me this thing. Uh, the Laugh Brothers are, they'll make you laugh. Uh, well, you better be right. Clicks on it. And they're, you know, dancing, doing whatever, and then they hold up the death to all Jews sign. And he gives this look like, oh my goodness, ridiculous, ridiculous, this is out of this world. How could someone possibly hold up such a straight, such a, such a horrible sign? See, the problem with it is the presentation, Mm. because... Excuse me. If you watch the video, it just looks like he just found this video like Tosh.0. You know, they just look out and they just find videos that are ridiculous and they talk about them. Yeah. The thing behind it was that he paid them to do that. But it is not present in the video that that happened unless I missed something. As I watched Mm. the video, it just looked like, oh, they found this random video and he wasn't expecting it. No, he specifically paid them to do that. And his excuse was, well, I didn't know that they do it or not. Bullshit! 
You paid uh, them to do it. <laughs> like the what? That's me how off. Fiverr works. They don't yeah. fucking just deny your shit. If they would deny your shit, they would just they would have sent you your money back and been yeah. like, "No, sorry, we can't do that." Yeah, and he goes on to say, like, "Oh, I did it to show just how crazy and messed up this world is." Uh, yeah, but see, you're contributing to it by doing that. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he is so aloof. And, and, and that's the problem. He is, he's not a fucking Nazi, right? He's not no. like someone who, more than likely, he just doesn't give a shit. Because yeah. he's, he's got money. He's at the point where it doesn't really matter what he, you know what I mean? Like, he's never going to be affected by it. He lives in, like, Sweden, doesn't he? Like, uh, Finland or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, he, so he's not even living in America, so he doesn't know exactly what the the country that has the most diverse amount of people that are going through this shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't, and I'm pretty sure he's, like, straight white guy, you know? Mm-hmm. He, there's no emotional stake in him caring about the issues that are going on right now. So he doesn't have to. Like, that's literally what privilege is. It's not that you're a hateful person. It's just that you don't have to care. (laughs) That's what it is at the end of the day. I don't have to care that uh, neo-Nazism seems to be making a comeback. I don't really need to care about that because I'm never going to be affected by it. And so for me to make a light, uh, well, to him, a lighthearted joke about it, it's Mm. just, it doesn't matter to me. But the problem is, is that perpetuates imagery and bullshit that people see, especially when it's not being written smart enough. See, th- this is just a spectacle. There's no commentary behind this. You know what I mean? There's nothing smart that makes it justified that this is a ridiculous thing that was done. You know? Um, and if for him to say, like, oh, I was just showing how ridiculous this world is, there's no commentary that he gives. He's just no. like, <gasps> and, and that's basically fucking it. He didn't. He doesn't go at the end of the video. Okay, see, I did this because I was trying to send a message. No, as far as I know, unless there was something that I missed, and maybe I did, maybe I did. But as far as I saw, it was just this thing happened. Oh, that's the thing that people think. Oh, what a weird world. And so, um, the the dude, uh, film crit Hulk, or uh, you, you know about this guy, right? Uh, not offhand, no. Uh, he he's this guy who kind of talks like the Hulk. When critiquing things, it's you know, oh. it's weird. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, it is definitely one of the more unique takes, though. Okay, <laughs> but um, so basically, he says, um, he says making inane quote unquote shock jokes will inevitably push you into becoming that actual hyper conservative jerk, right? Mm. And he says it starts with making a quote unquote joke, but the outrage is sincere, so the just joking defense is put up. But the consequences feel weirdly real. But rather than face yourself, other people's sensitivity becomes the enemy. So the jokes get more extreme. So Mm. the consequences become more real too. Then you're so embedded in your own war on sensitivity that you don't realize you've just joined a side. Now, sure, you don't know what you stand for. It's just all about, you know, liberal tears or whatever. Mm. But soon the people who support you start making sense because they see the same flaws in the people you hate uh, and the same people you hate that you do. They uh, they see the same flaws in the people that you hate that you do. That was oddly com- <laughs> I had to make sense of that while I was saying it. Dude, I was like, I- and soon enough, you become the very fascist asshat that you once could not relate it to, but only made jokes about. That's the problem. While we're talking about someone who has gotten some hot water over anti-Semitic remarks. Let's move on to someone else who is in hot water over anti-Semitic remarks. <laughs> Our album review this week, Lupe <laughs> Fiasco. <laughs> what the fuck is it that people have with Jewish people, man? I don't Jews know, man. To me. <laughs> I, I guess the stereotype is, you know, the, 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 the quote, the media is run by Jews and all that, and <laughs> maybe there are a good bit of Jewish people that just happen to be radio executives, but or uh, like record label execs or whatever, but I don't see why people have to blame them as if it's because they're Jewish that they yeah. screwed them over. Look, can I just say this? If these Jewish people are so powerful, how the fuck do you keep getting away with saying shit like that? That's very true. 
<laughs> how did that shit happen in the first place? Yeah, if they are so powerful and taking over the world, how was one of the uh, biggest rap artists of our time able to say something like dirty Jews or whatever the fuck he said in that line and not get his fucking head hacked off? You know, like, because he's basically moved on from that. He's receiving no backlash. Nothing's really happening to him. You know, I mean, people gave him shit for like a day or so. And then he said, oh, I'm going to stop making music now. But then he put out the next album anyway. <laughs> yeah, see, the context there was uh, Lupe said it, back in December of last year, um, I get it. I'm retiring. No more music. I'm not touring anymore. The album that I was working on, it's canceled. The trilogy I was working on is canceled. It's done. I was um, like, that's not what we fucking said. We didn't say we hated your music. We said we hated that you said something that sounded really anti-Semitic. Like, I hate how artists, sometimes artists are just not able to take a fucking second to figure out the nuance of what someone is fucking trying to say to them. And you think that an artist whose whole job, someone like that, his whole job is making subtle references to things and things that you have to think about for a second in order to get. Somehow, when you hear someone say, hey, dude, maybe don't call these guys dirty Jews, it kind of harkens back to something that's not so cool, you know what I mean? He's just like, oh, oh, well, I guess I'll just not make music then. Like, no, that's not what I fucking said. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm torn between whether or not he was just being over dramatic, or if it came down to a fucking publicity stunt to pump up the the album. Well, he he had just uh, gotten off of the record label. This is his first independent uh, album. Okay. And uh, so that song was made as sort of like his sort of like kiss off to them. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. I got you. So yeah. this album that we're reviewing this week, uh, how do you pronounce this? Uh, Dr- uh, Drogas? Drogas Light. Drogas Light was the first in, I guess, a trilogy that we're to expect. It was completed. Uh, they canceled its release. And now we're just getting it now. But this has been completed uh, for a while, uh, essentially. Uh, some album, uh, some singles, rather, have uh, already been dropped from it. And, and we're just now getting it now. And... Um, I want to make reference that just around this time, two years ago, we reviewed his last album. Oh, yeah. It was the episode right after the Super Bowl, <laughs> just like this one. And uh, it, was, it was right after MAGFest, which that year, it was in February. It was one of those yeah. later things before they pushed it back. Mm. That was um, uh, Tetsuo and Youth. Um, <laughs> Tetsuo and Youth. <laughs> From uh, from 2015, the hour and 18 minute epic that um we were torn on. I listened back to it. I gave it a three. Uh, you gave it a, a, a resounding five. Said it was uh, uh one of the best albums you had heard in a, in a long time. Mm. So I was excited and interested to see where we would where the middle ground would be if there was any middle ground. Or where we would find ourselves in this review. So um, I'm going to throw it over to you um, because I want to hear what you thought of this album uh, first. Like you said, I really liked uh, Tetsuo and Youth. Um, I also remember liking Great American Rap Album. So, you know, he's got a lot of solid uh, albums for me. Um, My problem with him that's always been is that he doesn't... he, He sometimes doesn't know how to stick to a context, a, 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 a concept, especially when he tells you that there's supposed to be a concept. Like, uh, excuse me, specifically with The Cool, which I remember being advertised as like, oh yeah, it's gonna be like this concept of me meeting up with The Cool and, and I'm The Cool and we meet the game and all these things happen and you saw the album art and it kind of showed that, but then like the album has nothing to do with it. Like, what the fuck did that last song have to do with it? Like, there's maybe, like, one or two songs that actually relate to it, and it takes, like, three or four songs before it, they actually start with the actual cool. So it's just like, you know, this has always been his thing. Like, so you can't really expect him to, you know, really stick to a certain thing. Now, getting into this album, like I said, this is his first independent album. Mm. Uh, and so I'm thinking, maybe those other albums were kind of like, you know, for record label intervention, you know? Now, now there's no excuses. Now this is him 
doing exactly what he wants to do. No strings attached. Yeah. The chains are off. Mm-hmm. And, uh... I have no idea why this is what he wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, you can go in whatever direction you want. And they just, like, closed his eyes, spun around in a circle. It's just like, that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he was just like, uh, wait, I can do whatever I want? <laughs> cool, I want to like, do 17 different things. Oh, okay. It's your album, Lupe. Or maybe it was like, maybe they've been holding him back. Like, this is what he's really wanted to do, but they've been, like, pushing him in the sort of nerd rap category, I guess. So, so like, no, I want to do gangster rap and trap rap, mom. <laughs> nerd rap? No. Conscious hip hop? No. <laughs> you can't make me. Mm. I'm on my own now. Now I can do whatever I want. So half the album is going to sound the exact same because that's how I want it. <laughs> so uh we start off with the first song which does not like help any like he's like it literally just starts off yeah 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 trap droga droga no yeah 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 trap droga 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 trap 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 <laughs> trap trap droga i am lord yeah 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 like, you know that's not far <laughs> off from the actual lyrics just in case you're wondering <laughs> and and just in case he's not just like oh that's just the intro he does it later on so that's supposed to be like the uh I guess the breakdown, I don't know. What I think is interesting that he has a song on here called an intro, which this dopamine lit is supposed to be an intro. It doesn't really feel like an intro. It feels like a standalone track because... Yeah, it's, it's not introducing you to anything. No, the, the, only thing, the only thing that sounds vaguely like an intro is where he says, uh, Droga is dedicated to all the drug dealers, and that's it. And then yeah. there's another track on here that's called an interlude, and it's like twice as long. That's not an interlude. <laughs> it's fucking I'm how long is that songs. track? I name my songs whatever I want. <laughs> it's four minutes. That's not an interlude. With verses and a chorus. Hey, he's got no label telling him what he's gonna do. If he wants to name if he wants to name the second track outro with 18 more tracks going after it, god damn it, that's what he's gonna do. Who are you to tell him what intro and interlude means? He can define them however he wants. He's a free man now. So, um, I kind of like the hemiola flow of the first verse. Mm. He's like, da 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 When the beat's over in a 4-4. Um, then the chorus is a little confusing. He's like, fame is a dritta I, I, I thought he was saying Dritta, but I was like, I don't know what the fuck Dritta is. Is that another one of his uh, things that he just kind of makes up every now and then? But apparently it's just drug, but he was just adding a Dritta in there, but not really pronouncing it that well. And he just says, I want my name all lit up, and I leave the world how I came, in the clitter. I was like, wait, you want to you wanna come in a, a cl clitoris? I was wondering if that's what he said. I was really hoping it wasn't. Yeah, because I was like, what the fuck is a clitter? Like, that, that's not how people say that. Ooh. That's not even a cool way to say that. Nobody's ever said that. <laughs> yeah, and you don't come out of a clitoris, Lupe. You come out of the vagina. <laughs> Who are you to tell him how babies are made? He's a free man. <laughs> uh, but So that kind of raised my concerns. See, and I thought Dopamine Lit was one of the best tracks on the album, but it wasn't <laughs> a great intro, but I didn't mind it. Like... Um, I didn't realize that half of this album was all gonna have essentially the same fuck trap beat, but, um, yeah, I was like, all right, you know, this isn't normally what I would fuck with, but this isn't horrible, um, but it definitely got old after a while. So, we get into NGL, which is honestly one of my favorite, favorite songs, and I was like, okay, 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 <laughs> it's not gonna be that... I have a question about NGL, which is also uh, also just happens to be one of my favorite tracks on the album. Back in the day, they would have tracks like this, and it would stand for something, and they wouldn't be able to put on the album what it stood for because the language might get it pulled from the shelves or whatever. Yeah. In 2017, who's really worried about that? Yeah, I, just I don't call know. it maybe what it is. It, maybe he's just hoping it'll become a hashtag. I guess. Because they kind of repeat it a lot. They do. <laughs> and I like it, honestly. I like 
the sort of playing with the format of a of a rap verse, you know? And I actually ended up liking Ty Dolla Sign. Whenever whenever he does something with Ty Dolla Sign, which seems to be frequently, I don't know how that like is Lupe Fiasco and Ty Dolla Sign like they're the tag team. Ugh. You know? I really hope not. I did not care for Ty on this album. I could have really done without him. No, I, I thought this one was really good. Um, cause he's ta- like he's talking about some serious shit. Like, um, these rap niggas talk about the hood like we all lames and they seen it. It's entertaining. It's cool as hell. That beat dope, but they don't mean shit. That's why niggas gonna lose. <laughs> and then he says, um, and then he says one of the fucking realest shit. If they legalize that whole thing, they doing weed, next cocaine, niggas ain't gonna have no jobs, and Wall Street's gonna run the dope game. What a nigga gonna do? Yeah, you niggas gonna lose. And yeah. It's basically just saying, like, no matter what, like, black people are gonna be screwed over. And you guys that are, like, thinking you're running shit now with, like, the drug game or whatever, like, this whole legalizing uh, marijuana and, you know, maybe next Coke or whatever, like, all that's going to do is screw over you guys that have been trying to, you know, run your illegal shit. And it's going to be legal now, and now only Wall Street guys are going to have access to it. So it's still going to be just as corrupt as ever, but now you get no money again. <laughs> you know? Listen to the wise words of Frank Ocean's mom about how, how smoking pot affects <laughs> college kids, and then think twice. See, what I thought was interesting in this track, a really great line in this where it goes, um, A, A, disproportionate convictions, especially when it comes to our case, you seen the movie, they killed the nigga, why you still want to be like Scarface? I thought that was really (laughs) a great line, but then later in the album, I mean, it fucking says in the opening track, Drogas is for the drug dealers, and later there's another song that's like, glorifying selling drugs. It was like so like oh so what what's your stance exactly? Yeah. Yeah. That that that's one of the things that I kind of didn't get with what he was doing on this album. So it's like, dude, maybe it's not the fucking label. Maybe maybe you're just an indecisive motherfucker like You need direction, <laughs> Lupe. I hate to say yeah. it. <laughs> no, cuz that that that's the there's a polarizing sort of feeling like he, every now and then he'll talk that like sort of like smarter shit like we need to be smarter than this and you know especially on this song which is why I loved it so much uh, he's talking about how like you know if someone wants to help you like take their fucking help and you know reinvest and do all that do all that shit and but then I don't know it's just it just felt like he was saying the word niggas and bitches a little too much dude like I, I, I was gonna say that because that comes up on the album a lot and it kind of reminded me of when we were talking about um, J Cole. J Cole. It was like, is it real? Is it? Is he really this guy? Yeah, like it didn't I feel mean, natural. I, I like. I understand. You know, that maybe they're taken after. You know, what Lauren Hill said. You know, after all my uh, smart words and my theory, I had a motherfucker. So you ignorant niggas, hear me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like maybe that's what he's doing. But and, and niggas, I don't mind it too much. Because, you know, he's a black dude fighting and say it. But I don't know. Just saying, like, bitches just felt, like, a little too much like he was trying to fit in. Like, like he would be like, yeah, this is for all my bitches and my thugs. It's like, really, Lupe? Do you really have bitches and thugs? I mean, he, hey, he's from South Side of Chicago. Like, I mean, maybe he right. does. But I just figured, you know, like, hey, you know, they're my people. But, like, I'm not going to refer to them like that. Because, uh, you know, you know what I mean? It's not that you can't hang with the 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 killers and, and thieves and shit, but just like that doesn't mean you have to call them that. You know what I mean? Like you can still be that gangster, you know, street conscious shit. That doesn't mean you have to say that. And it, it feels like I'm getting caught up with language. I understand, but it's just like just here particularly the words like stick out for me because, like I said, Lupe's never really been that guy. But once again, maybe that's been the label keeping him down. Mm. You know, <laughs> maybe all this time he's been fucking hardcore Lupe, knock your fucking tooth out. This is the real been, Lupe. Yeah, he's just been being, he's been held back. <laughs> this is the new Lupe, just like the old Lupe. <laughs> um, um, I, I, I'm just gonna ask you straight up. So, NGL is probably, I'm just gonna say it's both our favorite track on the album. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with me? That yeah. promise is the worst song on the album. <laughs> okay, I think I agree with you. Okay, but I no, no, actually, no, I don't agree with you. I don't think that's the worst. It gets worse than that. 
uh, but okay. it is a it is a bad song. Um, it's really think, bad. I'm fairly sure he's doing it on purpose. Do you think so? Yeah, because he's he says in there, you know, he's repeating shit like "I promise, I promise, I promise." But then he goes like, "I repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it." And like that kind of sounds like the tongue in cheek sort of like I know that this is annoying. I you wasn't know? sure. Like I, I didn't really get like that. That didn't feel like a wink to me. Yeah, it's not. The satire is not sharp, or I guess not clever enough to really clue you in on what he's doing. You know, it's one of those things like I know you're being satirical. But that doesn't automatically make it a good song, though. I definitely feel like this one felt out of place, so I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't meant to be taken seriously, but Mm. I'm from the school of, and I've said this before, why would you purposely put a bad song on your album? Yeah. Even if it is just to be satirical. Yeah, this feels like it should have been on a mixtape or something released for free. Or do it like a skit, like have it short. Yeah. Not a full song, because then it, it can easily be taken as like, no, this was meant this way. Yeah, or, or you know what it is? It's one of those, I'm joking, but in case it turns out to be a big hit, I want to make it sound like it could be serious. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Try this to might play get radio both, play. Yeah, try to play both sides of the coin, you know. E- even though this isn't for Billboard, as he says in his first track, it could be. If <laughs> yeah. they want it, I'm not going to argue. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then you have Made in the USA, which I feel is one of the worst. I was torn between Promise and Made in the USA because Made in the USA, the chorus, holy fuck, where it's just Made in the USA said eight made times. USA, made in, see, that, that's the problem. When you do more than one track like this, you kind of stuck. Like, if you're doing one or two tracks, it's like, okay, he's taking the piss. But once you get to, like, the third track in a row that's joke doing these types of songs, it starts to be like, are you just doing this, and, but you're trying to, like, cover for it by being like, no, but it's a joke, <laughs> so let me have my cake and eat it, too. <laughs> Bad bitch from Miami, came from Cuba with her family. <laughs> when she speak, when I speak yeah, English, she'll understand me, so I speak that, speak that, speak that Spanish, mucho, mucho. <laughs> like, it's the only it. word I know. Stop it! I speak mucho, mucho Spanish! Stop! And then in verse 3, he comes with Ku Klux Klan in Indiana, bought that shit from Alabama, making it rain, g- give him Atlanta, making it, making it, making it, making it rain like New Orleans, Louisiana? <laughs> Lupe! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Lupe! <laughs> Come on, man. That shit ain't cool yet. <laughs> yeah, you need at least 22.5 years. <laughs> That's right. That is right. Uh, and then what's even most disconcerting, this should have turned every uh, Lupe Fiasco fan's ears up for a second. When he does the bang, 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 like fucking Chief Keef. Um, we get to jump next. I kind of liked it at first. I'm like, okay, he's telling a story. This is Lupe back in his comfort zone, telling a story of, like, you know, hood shit, but, like, you know, he's telling a full, like, actual, realized thing that's happening, you know. Mm. Excuse me. So he's talking about Emisa's girl, and some people start to shoot out with him, and he's like, she's like, I want you to write raps for me. Uh, and she's kind of like, she's like the easy E to his, you know, uh, uh, Ice Cube. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to write raps for me. And I'm going to spit them because I'm a real fucking gangster and shit. And then they like, some guys start shooting at them. So they start running and she's just taking it like, oh yeah, I fucking love this life. You know, it's fucking nuts. And then they get abducted by a UFO. Yeah. Where the uh, intergalactic asses get to clapping. And uh, I know what you're thinking. Oh, oh, wow. That sounds really cool. Where does it go? Nowhere. It's just like, they got abducted and... <clears throat> then they come back. Like, they, they don't get... The aliens don't attack them. They, they don't, like... You know what I mean? Nothing happens. There's no commentary on... I don't know. Maybe they get experimented on. Maybe they have to rap battle against the alien. No, it's nothing like that. It's just, like, they get abducted. They somehow find the keys and take the starship. And they come back to Earth. Then we get to High, which has the annoying, slightly feeling off-key chorus. High was so incredibly annoying because 
See, what goes on in high, it, it's a four minute quote interlude. Um, it's got another <laughs> vocal sample, but it's pitch shifted, so it's way high pitched. And the intro of the interlude, the intro for the interlude, it's not an interlude. Um, it goes on for a minute. Yeah, and, and you way can tell, over, like, way over time. It's just like this should have been over by now. Uh, and you can tell, like the original way he sang it might have been in key, but the way it's pitched, it's slightly out of key with what's happening. You know? Yeah, that was. Mm, I'm really glad it didn't do that shit throughout the whole thing, but it does come back, and it's yeah. like, oh god, I thought we were fucking over this, but I guess not. And then we get tranquilo mm, with, with Rick Ross. Yeah. And now, see, Rick Ross feels like he's no longer relevant anymore. Yeah. And it's kind of funny, because now I like his stuff. Right? <laughs> he's like, God damn it! <laughs> Every time nobody wants to fuck with him anymore, that's when I feel like the music starts to get better. I swear to God, I'm not a hipster! Lupe's verse was all about how he's just like, I'm just gonna be peaceful, I'm not gonna fuck with anybody, which kind of got countered by all the shit he was talking for the last couple months on Twitter, but you know what? Maybe he just can't pay attention to rappers' Twitter anymore. If you're gonna be a fan of someone, you just can't. Don't follow them. Don't follow them if you're a fan of them. Then we get Kill, and I really enjoyed Kill, even though from that song title, I was like, oh, fucking no. Oh, no. <laughs> Just kill. I'm going to kill. Kill. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the song title does not hip you to what's going on in this fucking song at all. It's a strip club song. The strippers have a gravitational pull. And the, the astronauts and the alcohol are drawn to them. I guess that's what I'm supposed to get away from that. Like, maybe if he said, like, niggas are like astronauts to the strippers who are, like, their satellites. Like, maybe. But he doesn't really make that fully clear. It's one of those, like, eh, you kind of get it, right? It's close enough, isn't it? Um, th then you got tied up, like, like I said, the verses are cool, and the chorus is really chill, like, I actually, like, really like, like, I can imagine being up at, up in the cut at a strip club and this song comes on, it'd be like, yeah, fucking, fucking chill, you know? I don't think it ever will, because, you know, it's Lupe, but, <laughs> but, you know, it, it like, it, it, it's chill, it doesn't, this is the song that doesn't feel like it's trying to be a joke, it feels like an honest sort of, like, Oh, yeah, you know, sometimes I go to strip clubs and I make it fucking rain. Like, yeah, you know, that's what happens. And then you have the ending <laughs> where they flip it and there and she goes to church the next day. <laughs> then we get pick up the phone. And although I like it in a way, I feel like acoustic music is weird for Lupe. I don't know. I'm just used to his voice being behind, like, this more metallic shit. Pick but, up the uh, phone was... I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I really didn't care for the other guy. No. Yeah, I, 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 and just the fact that he was like, you know, the first time he's like, won't you pick up the phone? You know, it's like, yeah. And then right before the chorus gets in, he's like, pick up the fucking phone. Like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the anger? <laughs> yeah, like, you were not showcasing that before, you know? Like, why are you mad now? The last songs on this album are dramatically different from the first yeah. because yeah. you got four tracks in a row that are all basically like radio singles which is weird <laughs> um because again in the first track he says uh, uh this ain't for bilbo meaning like th this isn't for the billboard charts when these clearly are um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I i dug them not to the point where i'd probably like man i really really liked these songs because i liked ngl and um uh tranquilo more than these but th th they were a fun departure i thought i i felt they were so weird like pick up the phone I, you know, pick up the phone had the the sort of intelligent lyrics, but not like intelligent, like oh, high pollutant. But like it's just sort of like oh, it connects the idea of two things in a very uh, direct way. That's really cool. Like uh, my sadness is a snitch, my melancholy is an informant. 
Despair wears a wire. My longing rapping a song. My worry is a rat. My lonely's tapping the phone. Like, that's really cool. Like, mm. I like how he does stuff like that. I wish that that was more present in the album. Um, and then you get It's Not Design, which is really weird. It's like a disco futuristic thing. Yeah, it sounded <laughs> like, like, uh, like Daft Punk or like a Pharrell yeah. song. Yeah, I was like, what? What's happening right now? <laughs> and it's just like has the intro for the first couple of seconds, like with no words over it. So you're just like, are we really about to do a disco song right now? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what's happening? And then it co- sort of turns into like futuristic disco. Like he's talking about like living in the future and how love will be connected for you. So you don't really have to work hard for it. It'll just be wires that bring people together. It was like, oh, that's interesting. God, so that's kind of weird. Um, it really makes get, me wonder why there wasn't as such interesting concepts conveyed in the earlier songs on the album. Like, why save them all for the end? Yeah, and, and with the other songs, it felt like they were going somewhere, but they just never finished. Like, mm. with uh, the other one, um, the one where they get randomly abducted by a spaceship. Yeah. And I'm thinking, like, maybe the rest of the album will be like that, just weird adventures. But, no. <laughs> um, and then you get Wild Child, which I felt like was... Pick up the phone, but more generic. Yeah, I, I didn't care for Wild Child. That 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 felt really weak. That felt like the most trying to be top forty. Yeah, and, and either way, like he's like, you make me feel like a wild child over this tame as fuck beat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like uh, really? Is your definition of wild? And then you get more than my heart, which is nice. It's a nice little song. It's a sweet song <laughs> to end it. Feels wildly out of place on this album. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely out of place. But yeah, I liked the sentiment, the um, the uh, the song for your mom. Yeah, and and uh, also when he's just like, now you sitting there looking stupid in your face. When you get home, just tell her you're sorry and put this uh, and put on this song. Start moving to the bass, and then you hear someone say, "Boy, cut that shit off." God damn, mama, they made this song for you. <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. Yeah, and the really sweet part at the end where he's like, you know, some moms are like this, some moms are like that, and you know, some might think that their mama isn't here anymore, but, you know, she lives. Mm. And it's just said really simply and sometimes things that are really simple are it can just really tug at you, man. Like, just the way he was singing the she lives. It just, I don't know. The, Sometimes if something repeats that's really simple in a way, it just really gets to you. And that really got me. So, like I said earlier, last time we were really torn on Lupe. This time I think we might be a little bit more in line. But I gotta ask, <laughs> on the scale of 1 to 5, what would you give? Uh, uh, don't tell me. Uh, fucking uh, Droga's Light. Yeah, 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 I am Lord. <laughs> yeah, 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 I am Lord. <laughs> it's like, um... <laughs> It's it's the light beer. It's Droga's light. Half the calories. <laughs> should, you give us, should you give us Droga's original first? Droga's dry. But um, I give this a three and a half. I would too. Look at that. Yeah, it's a shame. It, yeah, <laughs> it's really I'm, a shame how I'm starting to come closer to you, man. Oh uh, God, like, see what two years can do. No, um, <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know, like. A- after the last one I, that I wasn't a big fan of, I wasn't expecting a whole lot. Um, I enjoyed tracks on this album a lot more than I did on the last one because I just wasn't feeling the other one as much. You, you know, with every artist I like, I always be, want to be like, aha, you cannot deny how good they are now. But it's like, um, hmm. this is possibly weaker than Lasers, I would say. Ooh, wow. Yeah. I liked lasers. I thought lasers was solid. It, it was weird in how it kind of felt like it was trying to go for the electro thing, but it at least had heart. Like, people shitted on lasers. I was like, what, why? It's not that bad. Like, it just felt like it already had a bad reputation because of all the shit going on behind it. Mm. But it was like, you know, divorce from that, it's a solid effort. So, where do we go from here? This is the first album in a supposed trilogy. Like, are Dude, they going to be connected? Gonna- or are they going to be like like you've always said, where it's going to be like, <laughs> oh, it's part two, but it's, you know, couldn't be far removed, more far removed. It's like a completely different fucking thing. Like, what's the underlining thread supposed to be between these? Is there even going to be one? Because by the time we even get a second one, 
this this one album has already was delayed as is. So it's going to be even longer between the writing process of the first and the second one, unless he already has a second one, like, done and just waiting to be released. But, yeah, I don't... I'm not excited for part two from this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where he was, Like, what was the last song supposed to leave us with to, to whet our appetite for what's coming next? For, for how schizo this album felt at some times when you had songs that were like, you know, like the hood anthems on the first half, and then the second half it gets all weird top 40 shit, you could have split this album into a couple EPs, and it could have been like a part one <laughs> and part two. Yeah. This didn't feel like one whole thing. It felt disjointed. Definitely. And it, it, like I said, that's always been a problem with Lupe. It, for someone who's so smart and so, like, gifted... He seems to never be able to focus enough for, like, a completely solid project. Thank you very much for joining us this week on the Going Off Podcast. It's been a rough week, rough news week. I sliced my fucking finger open and have to have six stitches put in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Was your thumb a tattletale, though? Because snitches indeed get stitches, so... Oh! Oh! (laughs) Yeah, you sound like you're putting it all together now. Oh, shit. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did he tell us someone? All our old episodes are on uh, Spotify. Not Spotify. I keep wanting to say that. SoundCloud, iTunes, and uh, YouTube. You can subscribe uh, to our show on iTunes so you never miss an episode. And uh, if this is your first time listening, you can go back, enjoy our catalog of almost 100 episodes. And while I'm thinking about that, by the way... I've asked about this on Twitter and never really got a definitive answer because I don't really know if enough people saw the post. If we do another song like we did for episode 89 for (laughs) episode 100, what should it be? I'm going to open that up to the audience. If there's specific songs, if we get one that, you know, gets a whole lot of comments, you know, maybe we can consider that. Obviously, something that is somewhat related you know a big epic thing uh so hit us up on twitter we have a new twitter by the way if you're not following us yet it's uh twitter um at going off podcast um we'll go in there is only one g but um uh yeah that, that's about it follow us on our socials and all that and we'll be uh back here again next week to do all this shit again but until then i'm muse and i'm rap critic stay out of bars